So guys, we are back with some more Project 3 cars. Project 3 cars? So guys, we are back today with some more Project Cars 3 content. And in today's video, we're going to be jumping back into the career mode section and in it to the IndyCar Championship. In my last video, I did the Formula E Championship. So if that's the sort of thing which does interest you and you haven't checked that out, do click the I button in at the top corner. Um, I also talked through a little bit about what the career mode is like in Project Cars 3 in that video. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be jumping into the IndyCar Championship. And a little bit like Formula E, it's a very short season. Only four rounds. Um, which, yeah, is a little bit disappointing in my sense. I would like it to be to be a bit longer, sort of reminiscent of a normal IndyCar season. Um, so today we're going to be doing the first two rounds of this championship. And then in tomorrow's video, I'll do the final two rounds. There's a mixture of ovals and road tracks, uh, which is good to see a little bit of variety in at that sense. So uh, today we're going to be starting off with the Texas Motor Speedway, uh, which is a tri-oval track. And then going to Road America, which of course, as it says in the name, is a road course. Uh, the final two rounds are at Laguna Seca and uh, Indianapolis for the Indy 500, essentially. But obviously, it'll be a lot shorter in this game. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, once again, like the Formula E season we did last time, uh, we're locked to the car that we have to use. So we can't change the livery. We have to go for Joseph Newgarten's car. Um, so I think, yeah, last time we were locked to the Audi, um, Audi sport car in Formula E. You, you can't change livery unless you own the car. And uh, as you can see, we don't own the IndyCar. We've just got it on loan. Uh, we would have to pay 373500 for it. Um, yeah, we don't have anywhere near that at the moment. Or you unlock it at driver level 6. We're level 2 at the moment. So you can't just sort of jump onto this game and immediately unlock um, the Indy car. Same with the Formula E car and all of the single seaters, which is, yeah, a little bit annoying. So it would just be nice to change the livery. Now, seeing as this is an oval track, we should be able to pretty much keep full throttle um, for most, if not all, of the race. So for that reason, we're going to go for the highest difficulty because it shouldn't be too difficult to sort of get our lines uh, or yeah, sort of get our speed correct through the corner. So we're going to go legendary AI, very high AI aggression. This is the maximum difficulty you can go on project cars, um, and I think we are going to be starting from the back. I believe in this. Uh, no, we're not. We are starting halfway. So this seems to be a thing throughout the course of the career mode. You literally start in the mid pack. Um, there's no qualifying. Once again, you just straight into the race. No practice. Uh, this is going to be 14 laps of the oval. Um, I believe each lap is about 20 to 30 seconds. So yeah, I'm just going to jump straight into it. So we've got a rolling start. Um, and I guess, yeah, we just sort of keep full throttle and wait for ourselves to take over. I'm just going to change the camera angle to the T-cam and we get a lot of wheel spin there and as we now go towards the uh, the first lap of the race we're in third gear uh, it's going to be interesting to see what gear we can stay in around this track try and draft some of the opponents here and it's going to be interesting to see what it's like on this highest difficulty oh, we're going low we're going very low Made a little bit of contact there, but um, seeing as this is a very arcadey game, it uh, doesn't have really any effect. So we go very, very high into this corner, have to get off the throttle there. Um, you gain so much speed from drafting by the looks of it. And we're up to P13 at the moment, so we've made up four positions on the opening couple of laps of this race. Try and get into the draft here as we uh, go to finish the second lap of the race. We're going to go low side and the cars into this first corner it seems to be going in pretty uh, pretty slowly and taking a high line. So once again made up a couple of positions there. Whoa, there's, there was a little bit of contact ahead. I saw some uh, some tyre smoke maybe a little bit of contact and uh, yeah this is 
interesting at the moment. Once again, going low side into this corner. Had to let off the throttle a little bit. But we are up into P9. Got to make sure not to uh, make any contact, which is why I was a little bit of a little bit apprehensive to go to the draft there. So we've got a car on our inside now. I'll tell you what, this is uh, it's going okay at the moment. And once again, the car's so slow into this first corner. We actually had to dab on the brakes there. So, uh, yeah, interesting considering this is literally the highest difficulty as well. I'm going to go high side this time because we do have a car on our inside. Oh, there's a little bit of a squirm from one of the cars ahead there. And this is very difficult to make our way uh, through the pack. As we try and go all the way around the outside, that would be quite a move if we could. We're just finding it so difficult to uh, sort of make clean overtake. They're already too wide up ahead, so we're not going to uh, not going to bother that. We do just about get a position, I think. Yes, we do. Oh my lord! There was almost a collision there, but we somehow get through, and we're now up in it to P6 in pursuit of this leading pack in Joseph Newgarten's car. Uh, once again there was a car getting a little bit out of shape and we sweep down the inside gaining so much speed here in the slipstream once again going low side and we are up into P3 by the looks of it P2 I mean we're already 8 laps into this race and we've almost made our way to the front so it's looking good for possible victory here yeah. whew once again, nearly making contact. If we do make contact, I don't feel like it is the end of the world, though. As I've mentioned before, with it being so arcadey, I feel like we can get away with it. And we somehow sweep down the inside and in it to P1. We're just going to get drafted now for these final few laps of the race. Interestingly, I haven't gone up into fifth gear at all. I'm not even maxing out in fourth gear. Now we've got a lap in clean air, I'll be able to see whether we can actually just take it full throttle the whole way around. I mean, that corner was full throttle, I was pinned, probably didn't take the greatest line through there, uh, but still managed to go foot to the floor. Um, this one is easy flat, and then the final corner is barely even a corner. And that's the fastest lap, so... A lap in clean air without any drafting. And um, we're already over a second ahead of everyone. This is maximum difficulty. And all I'm doing is just turning left. I mean, I've done a little bit of oval racing on... I think it was R Factor I've done it on. And it's a lot more technical on there, that's for sure. I know obviously R Factor is a sim. But this really does just confirm that it's... Uh, an arcade experience because I like I can just take I, I can just take my left foot out doesn't matter just pin my pin my right foot to the floor and just probably use one hand on the wheel it's it's pretty easy to do to be honest uh, so we've got two laps to go yeah not much more to say really we might as well just uh, just skip to the end of this race around the final corner we go then. And we take victory by over two seconds here at Texas on maximum difficulty, maximum aggression. That that was that was pretty much as easy as it comes. A um, little bit disappointing that that is the maximum difficulty. Uh, yeah, not much more else to say really. It was relatively easy to get used to. I don't do a lot of oval racing whatsoever. You can see there. Our best time was a 24.7, and that was done without drafting as well. Um, obviously, in clean air, it, it, it's a lot easier to, to take the corners flat out. But even so, you'd expect cars to be drafting you and closing in. But it didn't really happen as soon as we got up in to the lead. But yeah, 25 points for that first race. Uh, next up, we'll go to Road America for... What well, I'm sure will be a lot more difficult on a road course. Mm -hmm. 
So into the second and final race of today's video we go then and to the first road course of this IndyCar season. It's uh, around Road America, just four laps around here. Um, obviously the track is a lot longer than the Texas Speedway, which is why it's, uh, the laps are so much, uh, so much less. And the difficulty, can you believe, we're gonna have to go for medium difficulty. Last time we ran legendary, um, but obviously around an oval, it's a lot more easy to overtake. There's a lot more overtaking spots on a 14 lap race. And the AI just seem a lot quicker on road courses compared to ovals. Um, so Pro, I found, was still too quick for me. Very hard, I was about the same as the AI. But because we're starting so low down in P17, we have to get so much overtaking done. Um, so for that reason, we're having to go for medium AI. I know I've said this before in previous videos, but I do find it a little bit annoying that there's sort of no possibility for qualifying um, in these races. Because it'd just be nice to be able to start higher up. Anyway, into the race we go then. One thing I've found with these Indy cars is that the AI are so much quicker off the line compared to myself. So we make up a few positions there. I'm having to go around the outside here. Um, can we get some good traction off here? Oh, the AI has seemed so slow out of the corners there. But uh, as we go further down the straight, they seem a lot quicker than me. So a little bit unbalanced there. And I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to go for a massive dive down the inside. There's so few laps in this race and so many positions to gain. I do feel a little bit dirty going for those lunges down the inside, but uh, it's an arcade racer, so I feel like it's just got to be done. Up to P12, so a reasonably decent start. It'll be interesting to see what these AI are like um, past lap one. So what I found last time in the Formula E cars was that the AI were a lot slower on lap one compared to the laps after that. So we've made up five positions on this lap, but it's going to be a lot more difficult to make up positions um, on, on laps after this. But we get a brilliant run through there. I don't quite know how we've carried so much more speed than the AI through there. But I'll take it nonetheless, and we're up to P10 now. So in it to the points we go, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot more difficult to make up positions from here on in. So we go through the final corner here at Road America. Got a lot of push to pass to use by the looks of it. Uh, so yeah, the difference between the road cars, uh, road indie races and the ovals is that on the road courses you have uh, push to pass to use. So that operates in the same way as Kurz did on the old F1 games. You uh, assign a button and then you have sort of a certain amount of electrical charge to deploy. And it gives you a little bit of extra top speed. So uh, yeah, the AI looking very slow at the start of this straight. Uh, but then I can almost assure you that uh, as we get further down, they'll get quicker. Very heavy braking zone once again. Can we get the move done? No, not quite. But we do get one position up to P9. Oh dear. Tell you what, stay off those curbs. They are lethal. It's the same with the exit curbs as well. The car just seems to get stuck on the exit curbs. So uh, I'd recommend staying off the curbs whenever you can. Because now we go into this interesting 180 degree right hander carrying so much more speed than the AI but it's so difficult to stick a nose down the inside there. I think it's clear to see that we are a lot quicker than this medium AI but it's so difficult to make an overtake and make it stick. So can we make a move down the inside here? No, not quite unfortunately. I think that's going to be our final chance until the next heavy braking zone. Once again, not close enough. Through the final corner we go. Using a lot of push to pass once again. And absolutely blitzing the AI down this straight. So up into P8 we go then. Trying to draft the Carlin car ahead. We're going to go to the outside. 
and hopefully carry some more speed through here. Goes defensive. And up to P7 we go then. So two laps to go. And I don't I don't get that. Like at the start of the straight we just seem to be so much quicker than the AI. And then you can see here they're pulling away. Very strange. Anyway, another dive down the inside to hopefully get us a position. And it does up into P5. We're gonna be on the inside here. We're just gonna get pushed out, I think. Ooh. I mean, we did push a car out, but uh, we ended up losing a position in the end anyway. These high aggression AI are very difficult to uh, to race against. So we now once again go th through this right-hander, which is very tricky to get right. Ah, that's where we got stuck on the exit curve. You can see what I mean. Like you literally touch one of those curves. It completely sends you off as we somehow have a lot more speed compared to the AI car there. Not quite able to make the overtake through there. It's a very tight circuit, this Road America, which is why it's uh, quite difficult to sort of make an overtake and make it stick. As we now go through the final corner using this push to pass once more. This time, not having a great deal of speed compared to the AI. Very, very bizarre. Very bizarre. But so uh, we do manage to make one move in to turn one up to P4. And there's still a chance that we can win this race. Not if we do that. Not if we get on at the curves. I should have learnt from that. Catapulting on to this straight. We've got a hairpin next up, so this is a good opportunity to overtake. And up to P3 we go on the straight. Can we make this dive down the inside? Not quite by the looks of it. I mean, the DHL car, which is leading at the moment, is the one that we were battling for about P6 or P7 in this race. So, he's just absolutely sent it in to the lead. I think we might have one or two more chances to overtake and that'll be it. This has been far from the cleanest race, so I do apologise for some pretty terrible contact that I'm making, but I feel like because it's an arcade game, it's, it's sort of acceptable to do that. Now, this is where we need to carry some more speed compared to those two cars ahead if we're to make any sort of move before the end of this race. We've got a heavy braking zone coming here. This is where we can get speed. Oh, it's going to be side by side into the final corner by the looks of it. We're just going to send it down the inside. Oh, we don't quite manage to get the move done and we've been pushed through that final corner, surely we're not going to lose out on P3 as a result. Oh, I think we have. We've just missed out on P3. Across the line, and it is. It's P4, unfortunately. A great battle through that final corner. Um, yeah, that was a pretty bizarre, interesting race. So, on medium AI, we managed to make our way up to P4. There was a lot of contact in that race. I felt incredibly dirty um, compared to my usual F1 racing where, you know, if you made that sort of contact, you'd uh, get a lot of damage on the car. So, it was very close. It was 0.026, the gap at the end, by the looks of it which uh, means that we take 12 points in that race. Unfortunately, don't quite make it on to the podium either. So uh, it's a win for Perez, who I believe we're battling in the championship. Yes, we are. So he's on 35 points. We're on 37. So, uh, yeah, as we go into the final two rounds of the season, we are in the lead of the championship. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, do make sure to leave a like. That's going to do it for today. Um, so in the next video, I'll finish off this championship at Laguna Seca and the uh, Indianapolis Oval Track. I'll catch you then. Do take care. Bye-bye.